I started using D2L, uh, this term that has just concluded, and uh, when Jane and Paul contacted me about this, I thought, well, my experience is not particularly informative, but they convinced me it was. Uh, so <laughs> that said, I'm going to talk about a very limited set of subjects, and uh, I think the other presenters will fill in some of the other details. So I used LEARN uh, in CS145, this term, which was uh, being piloted as a, an advanced core course. So every student in the Faculty of Mathematics has to take one, of, uh, one computer science course in their 1A term, and there are three levels. Uh, and the, what I was teaching was the advanced version for about 50 to, I was I was I had a cap of roughly 75 students in my head and I started out with about 70 and ended up with about 55 as people drifted off um, and this is there are 1200 students odd entering the faculty so this is a, a very uh, select group of students uh, instructor consent was required to get in I asked for CVs and transcripts it is unusual in that I know more, perhaps, than, than most instructors would about technology. Um, I started using the web in 96. I had to write my own CGI scripts at the time. There were no off-the-shelf solutions. The other thing that's unusual is the students are exceptionally capable. Some of them had not programmed before, uh, so they knew how to use computers but not how to uh, program them. But they're extremely good math students, nearly all of them. And so I. They had good abstraction skills. Uh, what is not perhaps uh, so unusual is that, uh, as usual, I didn't prepare very much in advance. So I was doing things uh, on the fly. And, and um, this, I think, is perhaps a little more typical. So the only thing I used Learn for uh, were a set of dynamic web pages. So I had static web pages set up to explain the syllabus, the philosophy, uh, all the lo logistics of the course. And then as the term progressed, I would create lecture summaries and then uh, post them to the web immediately after lecture, or as soon as I managed to get them done. And uh, that was new for me. I hadn't done that before. Previously, I just posted my slides, but my slides, as you can see, have gotten a lot more sparse. Uh, the other thing I used it for was, uh, were the discussion forums. And uh, having used those in UW ACE, uh, I'm quite pleased at the transition. It's not, it's not perfect. There are things I'm going to complain about in this talk, but uh, there's certainly, it certainly is an improvement. Uh, and I'll discuss these sort of the alternatives that, uh, that we have around here. The web pages, uh, I generated those outside using another system. So I had basically a whole directory full of HTML files and associated PNG images. And I would upload those on a regular basis to, to learn. And so this is one thing that, that I think uh, people will be doing. The content of uh, the web pages, uh, with three parts really. Uh, assignment questions, each one its own uh, HTML file. Lecture summaries, each one its own H HTML file, but a lot of cross-indexing and, and linking to external files. And in addition, the lecture summaries had mathematics that I was using. Um, I was, I'm using a, an online service that puts math fonts into uh, my HTML file. That involves the use of JavaScript, and that worked quite well. I was surprised that it worked just uh, out of the box with, with D2L. And finally, occasionally I would post sample programs, and this turns out to be a, a source of problems. So what is good about D2L is that it separates the organization of the files, the, your internal structure of how you organize your directory tree, and the actual presentation to students. Uh, this is good, but it is a little confusing. So when I go into uh, D2L, uh, I took a lot of screenshots because one of the things I have to com complain about is that, that navigating is a little slow for me. Uh, and, and I thought that too much time get churned up uh, doing that if I, if I, did it, uh, if I tried to do it uh, in real time. Uh, if we navigate, click content, I get this uh, list of things. And manage content really comes up first. And what, I, what is created uh, is, is a structure that I created uh, in order to show the students. So this is not the view they see, but this is the view that I manage uh, close to what they see. Lecture summaries, assignment questions, various files. And then uh, sub, subheadings within that. Now, over here uh, are the, the various uh, icons that you use to create and, and modify these things. And to be honest, I can't figure these out. Uh, I, I, every, every time I try to do this, I click the wrong thing. Uh, but that could be just me. Uh, that's uh, something, something to be concerned about. And that's quite different. If you go to Manage Files, you will see a more traditional uh, directory structure, which is what I'm more used to. So I think the 
interface is, is relatively um, unintuitive. And things are separated all over the place. And I put uh, as a question mark uh, protecting novices on that slide. If you, if you go to an ATM, you may notice that you, you're constantly reaching all over the place to do things. And that's a deliberate on the part of the designers. They don't, want you to, they don't want to have buttons that do different things that are too close together. On the other hand, that's novice mode. And there is no expert mode on an ATM. If you know what you're doing, it's still slow. You can't do it quickly. And some of that is present here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a way to do things quickly. Now, maybe I didn't discover it, but, but it's something that I would like to have. I would like to have expert mode. And too often, I was frustrated by the lack of it. Uh, and then there was a, a slight glitch with, with file types. So um, when we go back to these, oh, sorry, this is going ahead. We go back to these various, uh, most of these are HTML uh, uh, files. And when you click on them, you actually get, uh, you get the file there presented. But, but these are programs. And the, the, uh, the suffix, the file suffix is .rkt, like .doc or .docx for, uh, for word programs. Now, .rkt was not recognized by D2L. And so when students clicked on this, they got an error message, essentially. What they had to do is, in their view, up here somewhere, there's a print slash download. Uh, they had to click that, and then they had to click download, and then click one more thing, and the file would eventually show up. So it was, it was quite difficult for them, and they complained about it. I managed to get uh, through a D2L, and the pe our people working on it are pretty responsive, which is nice. And I, partway through the term, I said, I need .rkt to work. Um, and that was done. So now when students click on this, it does, it does download. Um, the problem that I see is that there are hundreds of these file suffixes. What your browser does is it decides if it, it doesn't understand a suffix, it shows it as text. And nearly all programs, uh, computer programs, are text. So that makes sense and it works. Across this campus, we're not going to just be using this language that I was using in first year. There are many different computer languages in use in engineering and in science. People are going to be wanting to put programs up uh, of all different types and files up of all different types. And I think this is a weakness and we should talk to D2L about getting some sort of support for an arbitrary file type. Okay, so this is the manage files view and what I'm seeing is a standard sort of directory tree over on this side and then I can click through and this is the, the actual uh, view of the directory. So you can see that all the files that I've uploaded, HTML files and so forth. And the interface here starts to get a little strange because some icons are up here, some are down below, and so forth. And uh, what is kind of nice is that if I click directly on the, 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 the um, if I click directly on the link, sometimes I get a view of it, sometimes it, it downloads. I haven't quite figured out what, so I tend to avoid that. If you click to the side, you, you do get a context menu, which, which is convenient. So, You'll notice a zip file, and this is really what I used to use. I used to zip uh, my directory up, do a single download, uh, upload, and, uh, and then uh, if I get the context menu for this, it has a, an entry to unzip. And it will ask me, uh, do you really want to, this is going to overwrite files, do you really want to do this? And of course I did, so I would overwrite files that way. So I got into the, this sort of workflow habit of regularly zipping, uploading, unzipping, and I was done. That was good. That was fairly fast. So what's good, familiar structure and zip files so that you don't have to do one file at a time. It's, it's quite nice. And the warnings, you are about to overwrite a file, these are good. On the other hand, the interface, again, to me is, is unintuitive. I have to keep looking for the icons. I, they're, not in a, they're not grouped the way uh, I think is, is natural or easy to learn. The dialogues are really... Uh, uh, frustrating at times. There seem to be too many of them. And the warnings, eventually, you, you want to be able to say, don't ask me again about this file because I'm constantly uploading it. You can't do that here. So these are, again, things that we might ask for as, uh, as requests. Now, to the discussion forums, then. Um, these are standard in computer science. And the, the, the normal mechanism is course news, news groups. And the things I didn't like about course news groups is that you could post uh, anonymously. Uh, there was no way, there was no simple way of uh, deleting a post that had too much information, like the solution to an assignment question or something like that. And uh, it was, 
a lot of these news groups are, are exported by the university and archived by something like Google Groups. And in fact, students like that because then they can use a web browser to, uh, to access uh, the discussion forum. But that means that what they've posted is, is, is there forever. Uh, it can never be erased. And so the employers can actually go and look up how stupid these people were in first year. And that is not something we want, uh, especially in, in, in light of recent uh, developments on, uh, about student privacy. So I set up these discussion forums. Uh, and there were more than 700 posts, mostly about assignments, but also to some extent about lectures. And I had a, a, an extracurricular miscellaneous forum as well. So what is good is that there's sort of several levels. I never quite figured out there's forums, there's topics, there's individual posts. Um, so there is some substructure so that you can try to direct students to, uh, to a, a topical area. Um, because students have to sign in, they are naturally identified. You see their full name. You can even display their student number if that is uh, of use to you. And there is some ability to edit. So I can delete uh, a student post and all of the replies to that post. So it's sort of a snipping off a subtree of the, uh, um, of the conversation. I cannot edit a student post, and this is a weakness. So uh, if there's a little bit of information I want to take out but leave everything else present, uh, I can't do that. Uh, and that was an, that's an ability I, I would like. So um, as I'll show you, the, the views onto the uh, uh, discussion is, are, are fairly limited. I found the navigation uh, difficult and the, the workflow involved in responding to questions, especially with that much volume, is, is, is not easy. It's slow. Uh, and, and I wish it were faster. Yes. So all the, the course material is password protected. Correct. Right? So were you saying that all the discussion forum becomes completely public? No. Uh, as far as I know, D2L doesn't have options to make things, that sort of thing, totally public. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Um, it was the news groups I was referring to, the, the, the conventional solution that CS uses. So that's the solution they will see in their upper year courses. Uh, D2L is new, we haven't used it before. And the advantage is that it is private. And in fact, it goes away. So, <laughs> you know, that, that stuff is not archived. I just Two views of discussion forums. One is uh, sort of a, a threaded view, but, uh, but you have to sort of click on an individual message to see it. You don't see the, the stream of messages, and I missed that. And the other is a kind of a flat view, which is, is, in my view, totally useless, unless you want to see the last thing that was posted. So uh, the things I have to complain about is that replying is awkward, and I'll show you that. Uh, it encourages what I call top posting. I guess that's a standard term, uh, which I think is bad. And the, the real estate is a little cramped. Uh, so this is, this is what happens when I click on a message, and I've clicked on one of my own messages. Now I can take this and drag it up and down, but I have to do that manually. And I can undock this. This is a window uh, snapshot, not my entire computer screen. Uh, I can undock this and take it into a separate window. But the one time I did that, it wouldn't. Uh, the undock icon is right here. It's completely unintuitive. And um, there was no redock icon. And I couldn't figure out how to get it to go away. I closed it, and then I opened the next message, and it came up in a separate window. I had to go back into my settings to fix it. And that's not good. Now, maybe I was making a mistake. But. So what do I do when I have this message that I'm looking at? Well, I've got, there's some icons up here, but I can't see much of the message. There's a scroll bar here, and I can scroll down, but then I lose the icons. So uh, I start to reply. And this is what I get. Uh, again, you know, not much real estate. And the top of an HTML editor. And I have to scroll down in order to. And when I scroll down there, then there's a second scroll bar for the, for the message itself. And what it has done is it's quoted my entire message, but in general, the message I'm replying to, and put me at the top. This is top posting. And it's the default, meaning that Students in, in one of these long chains, the entire history is down there in, in reverse order. Bad idea. I um, mean, it, it's fine if you want to review the whole thing quickly, but otherwise, it, it's really it's very awkward. Um, so now I, I scroll down, and I, what I have to do is start editing this stuff. And because this is JavaScript as opposed to um, using a lot of native elements, 
the keystrokes that I'm used to for fast editing, some of them work and some of them don't. So in, I'm going to contrast this with Thunderbird, which is my mailer, and I can use a lot more keystrokes in order to quickly edit this, uh, this part. So uh, Thunderbird is, is a, a Mozilla product like Firefox, and so these keystrokes will work in Firefox as well. So this is a tiny screenshot of a, of a, um, a mail message I sent myself in Thunderbird. So this is what it looks like when I see it, and then when I hit reply, uh, I get this. Uh, I get a, a quotation, it's offset. This is the kind of thing I want, and I have to do this kind of thing manually in D2L. And what I did is, in fact, doing this kind of indentation is just too much work. What I would do is I would trim, I would select, and italicize. Uh, and this is occasionally a problem. The student has used italics in their response as well. But what I can do then is quickly go down here, delete stuff uh, with keystrokes that I don't want, and intersperse replies, which is what I want to do. So that kind of trimming is very quick and, and natural for me in, in Thunderbird and in other uh, in other text editors, and I, I don't have that natural flow in D2L. And I haven't been able to develop it. This is something I miss. Volume is definitely an issue. Uh, 700 posts, I had a problem that it took a lot of my time, but inf important information was buried in there, and some students had difficulty reading all that, especially if English was their second language. So one of the things I'm going to try next time is to create a, a frequently asked questions page and be able to link to that. I couldn't find ways of linking to, this, has been, this question's been previously answered, here's a link to it. I, I didn't know how to do that. And again, that may be possible, but, but I never figured it out on the fly. Universal problem, students will ask a question that really should be on the forum because the answer is uh, of use to everyone. And conversely, uh, students use the forum to ask an extremely personal question, like why doesn't my program work, when they really should be using email for that. Uh, I don't know how to, you know, that's a sort of a secondary skill I really don't have time to, to concentrate on. But I have to think more about how to, how to convey some of that to them. So in the future, uh, in the winter term, I am teaching CS146, the continuation, again, an advanced 1B course, and I will use D2L for that. But I'm also teaching CS442 programming languages, which is a fourth year course. Uh, these computer science students coming in are used to news groups and so forth. And I will just use conventional methods for that. And then I'll be able to get a little more of contrast and, and perhaps uh, a little more of an informed opinion on, on um, what, is, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses of, of D2L and, and what we might ask for from them. OK, that's it. I was wondering, you mentioned that you use an external program for creating your, your math uh, notation. And so you use that because it's, it's more complicated than, than what you can do in D2L, or you haven't even been able to do it in the places that you want to in D2L? So the way I generate my HTML is uh, on top of the programming language racket that I'm using, they have built uh, a system to generate their own documentation. And the advantage of that, there's an entire programming language underneath it. It renders both to HTML and through LaTeX to PDF. So. Uh, for these web pages then, I'm rendering to HTML and I'm putting LaTeX code in and then asking um, MathJax to put in the math fonts. I did not, I have not attempted and I won't attempt to edit HTML in D2L. I think it would be far too slow for me. 